and welcome to Culture here on i24 News. I'm Odette Gobel, happy to be here as always. Today on our program, we'll uh, talk to Israeli musicians Alon Olearchik and Eli De Gibri about their new project together, playing American jazz standards in Hebrew. And we'll hear about a French chef teaching gourmet cuisine to the chef of an Israeli soup kitchen. T for Two, or Teb Shnaim, is a new project presenting American jazz standards in Hebrew. Behind the project are two very prominent Israeli musicians, saxophone player and composer Eli De Gibri, and the singer-songwriter Alon Olealchik, who also translated the songs. I'm uh, absolutely thrilled to have them both here in the studio. Thanks for coming in. Thanks Welcome. for inviting me. So uh, let's uh, begin with how it all, star how it all started. How this, did this collaboration come about? Well, about uh, something like 20 years ago, um, oh, yeah. we had a, a project together. It was actually Alan's project. It well, was he was babysitting you? That was the project? Something or? like that. I was, uh, <laughs> I was 19 years old back then, and uh, it was called All Arctic Jazz, which was basically the same idea of um, translating standards mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in to, to Hebrew and um, and playing basically it was like two shows that we played live and then uh, 20 years later I came back from uh, my travels in the United States an established musician uh, in your own right by now uh, and uh, we uh, we met we talked about that project and uh, we said let's, let's do another one um, Wow. Only now it's going to be a studio mm -hmm. uh, project and I'll be the uh, musical producer. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Why, Amer why, why jazz standards? Uh, well, this guy is a jazz musician pr predominantly. I'm, uh, uh, I started with jazz when I was like 17 or 18. Then I moved to pop rock, and this is what I'm doing. I've been doing all my life. And once in a while, I'll do jazz. I love jazz. I mm -hmm. study jazz. And I love American standards. And it's a wonderful opportunity for me to just translate and sing yeah. and not worry about the musical aspects of it, which is uh, a little care. A specialist for. Now, uh, when it comes to selecting the, the songs for the project, was it obvious choices for you guys or was it a long long list and you had to, to cut, cut it down? We were just shooting out names you know. Yeah, it wasn't, songs, it like wasn't like long but it was longer than, than, than the, the nine Benjamin. songs that uh, um, we actually recorded. But so there yeah. could be a volume two uh, uh, around the corner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now Eli, do you think this this could make jazz more approachable to, to Israeli audiences? I think Is so. That the idea? I think so. I mean Jazz will always be a, an acquired taste, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, I think that when people will listen to the lyrics, which are absolutely great, I think, um, they will be able to connect with it more than just listening to w what usually jazz is instrumental. So, right, right. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the to the lyrics, alone translating was that a, a daunting task? I mean, uh, uh it was uh, it was tricky. It was tricky to translate. Um, my, the idea, my idea was not to translate New York into New York in Hebrew, mm -hmm. but to translate it into Israel, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv yeah, to make it um, you know. A, Fine-tuning it for, for Israeli For ears. Israel, you know, talking you know, eye level to people that yeah. are, are going to hear it, hopefully, which are Israelis. Right. And it's this whole thing about New York, New York, you know, and uh, they do it in musicals, but uh, this was a different idea. You but know? these are obviously songs that, that we've been, you of course and other people also have been hearing for so many years in English. There, there are so there are standards for a reason. Yes. Uh, uh, approaching them. Most of them belong to musicals, and one is from a movie. Smile, smile is from uh -huh. Charlie, Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. Uh -huh. no, there are two songs for, um, by Gershwin. You know, they they all these are all songs from the, like the 30s, 40s, and 50s of the previous century. You know. And uh, I grew up with those things. Those are songs that are uh, my parents' songs, basically. Yeah, you yeah. know, age-wise, I, I love them, and I love. I know 
many uh, different ver ver jazz versions of those songs. Right. And they're, that's why they're called standard, I guess, because yeah. uh, they're like public domain almost. Yeah. They're not, but they're, <laughs> but they're like cla classical, you know, like, I don't know, Beethoven's uh, yeah. symphony. So uh, there are so many performances of Be Beethoven's symphonies by all orchestras of the world, and they probably sound different from one, one to another. So that's but, uh, just another version. That's another version, but this is a, a, a big change because it's a language change. It's yeah. like half of the song doesn't sound like the original song, exactly. which is the, 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 you know, the voice. Yeah. And also, musically speaking, Eli, uh, arranging them for, for Israeli ears, was it a challenge? Not at all, because um, as you may know, there, um, the level of musicianship in Israel is very, very high. And um, so the musicians that played with us are incredible musicians. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of them you're going to see later, uh, Barack Mori is a great bass player. We're going to uh, play a tune for you later. And um, so it was really, really easy. Uh, all I, uh, I needed to to, to to do is to map things and uh, everything else just happened naturally and then after uh, what you do in the studio after everything was recorded and if you add stuff this was a, a different thing but mostly it was very organic and, and easy because great musicians were involved. And, and the, the, the result uh, also is uh, very easy on the ears and, and lovely. Now, you mentioned Barak Mori and you yourself, two uh, jazz musicians uh, that, Israeli jazz musician, worked in, uh, worked in uh, New York for many years, and there are several others. What is, uh, can you explain this connection between Israelis and jazz? Is there a reason for this? Gypsy music. Um, gypsy, some, some, some say, say uh, klezmer music has a lot to, uh, in, in common, and I agree. But I think, um, I think um, the, the is Israeli music, Israel, uh, music that we grew up on, uh, mm -hmm. not even Al Alan, I'm talking about me, I grew up on his music. <laughs> And, and he grew and, up on this. And on uh, Yoni Rechter and, uh, and uh, both of them. And, 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 and so many uh, are influenced uh, from uh, the jazz harmonies and right. jazz uh, melodies. And I think this really influenced us, uh, um, even if it was subconscious. Uh, right. um, and then this is one thing that makes us, I think, good musicians, but there's also something about the Israeli that has nothing to do with music that really wants to, uh, succeed. to succeed, mm. to succeed. The hunger. Yes, then, then more than, uh, uh, you know, a European kid who is, you know, we, are, we always want uh, Ch this is challenge, to, to prove something yeah. to the world, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, and this, mm. this is why we actually make, make it. So it's both. We are Talented and and um, we are always striving. Need to prove uh, ourselves. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, said uh, said uh, Ellie with great modesty. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, no, nobody right. else he's said right. it, so we had he's to say right. it first. Yeah. No, but I think he's but, uh, but absolutely I on think, point. I think I think even proving to yourself, uh, which m may sound uh, modest, is is still a, a mo motivation, a, gr yeah. a great motivation, yeah. even if you're not trying to prove the world, but just to yourself. Yeah. Uh, um, now you mentioned the uh, uh, Alon. Uh, obviously, you're a uh, as big of a music icon in Israel as, as one as, can as be. Old, as I'm old, yes. <laughs> um, when you're approaching a new project like this, is there some pressure that you're feeling because of how well established, how maybe uh, uh, what people might be expecting from you? Well, my, my uh, totem pole, personal totem pole, is not that high, basically. <laughs> so. Uh, the crash, if there is a crash, is going to be like, <laughs> ah, just hurts me a little bit. <laughs> you know, I can sprain my ankle for a second uh -huh. you know, or some dust on my pants, but not really. I'm not going to break my head. So I'm not really, uh, the, I've never been that person that builds a career systematically with p purpose in, in, in their head, you know, and uh, uh, does only that and nothing else. So uh, I'm fine. 
I'm, All right. I, I if, do what if I love. If you are, we certainly are. We're not gonna yeah. try to uh, just, uh, deter you from it. I just I love, love I, the jazz. Thing. I think that's uh, something that's rare and beautiful yeah. in a musician yeah. that uh, he does what. He loves, you know, yeah. and with, without thinking of uh, the consequences. The, well, it's, uh, it's a great approach and it's a wonderful project as well. Thanks, uh, thank you guys for, for uh, coming in and telling us about it. We're gonna, later on the show, we're going to hear you guys play as well with the Barak Mori on the contrabass. What are you going to play for us? This is a, a, a standard, obviously. It's called Alone Together, and in Hebrew, it's Levad Beyachad. Now, as uh, part of the French Gastronomy Week currently taking place in Tel Aviv, a unique master class was held with the head of the kitchen at Palace Elysee, Guillaume Gomez. He came to Israel for a real challenge, teaching a soup kitchen chef how to cook the best dishes on a budget. David Gombin and David Yakin followed him, had a taste, and brought back this story. February 16, 2015, 4 p.m. at the residence of the French ambassador to Israel. An unusual encounter. William Gomez is the head of the kitchen at the Elysee Palace. Daily, he prepares extravagant dishes for heads of state and royal families. Ravid Reichman is the head chef at the La Sova Soup Kitchen, which daily serves and feeds 2,300 people. To better understand her work, we need a change of scene. Welcome to a low-income neighborhood in southern Tel Aviv. We meet Ravid in this ancient synagogue that has been turned into a soup kitchen. This is our kitchen. This is where we prepare plates for 2,300 people every morning. An extremely difficult mission, the survival of the project depends solely on food donated by food companies, bakeries and caterers. And this is an unreliable supply line. It is always hard to predict what will happen the next day. It's all about doing the best with the means available. I take the artichokes, and you see we received pasta, for example, here. I take the artichokes, I also have these onions, so when I mix them both, we will get the flavor of an Italian pasta sauce. People don't understand what they have on their plates. They say, wow, this is Italian food. And even on days when there's not much to cook, Ravit must keep calm. In the morning, I am relaxed. That is to say, I cannot show my employees that I am under stress or pressure. These are not regular employees. They perform a service to the needy. More than just a chef in this kitchen, Ravit is like a second mother to all of those that life hasn't always pampered. In the past, she spent much of her life feeding soldiers in the army, reaffirming that she has a generous heart. Ravit is constantly trying to improve the dishes she serves. That's why she was invited to a special training session organized by the Embassy of France and La Tête, one of the largest NGOs in the country. How to make gourmet on a shoestring is a challenge for chef William Gomez. With the head of the institute, Paul Bacuse, Jean-Paul Lacan, he basically had to make recipes with these products that were at hand, rice and canned beans. Rice, salad, focaccia, palotin, and cake. The ingredients are simple, but the result is outstanding thanks to the valuable advice of the experts. I will implement everything I learned. I'll make the rice salad, which is amazing. Everything I learned, I'll do it again. I hope that through this training, throughout the week, the masterclass, as they say, hundreds of needy will eat a little bit of what President Hollande enjoys every day. A tiny ray of sun for disadvantaged people in Israel. According to the poverty report released last month by La Tête, this year 2.5 million are living in poverty. That is to say, one out of three people. That's it from us. Uh, we leave you today, as promised, with the song Alone Together, performed by Alon Olearchik, Eli De Gibri, and Barak Mori. Here it is. Enjoy. <laughs> מול העולם בלתי מנוצחים אם רק נהיה ביחד לבד ביחד פס הערה לילה שחור לילה נורא ממה יש לפחד אם רק נהיה ביחד כי זו אהבה עמוקה 
והיא חזקה וזכה, לכן הכל שטויות. אם רק נדע, נדע לחיות זאת אהבה עמוקה, והיא חזקה וזכה, לכן הכל שטויות, אם רק נדע, נדע לחיות.